In today's Wiki Wednesday lesson, we're going to learn all about fish. Fish are a popular pet, but they are so much more than that. Swimming about freely in the ocean in many different varieties and species. I've never met a fish before, but I've sure tried. I walk around a lake by my house with my mommy and daddy and see all the fish swimming in it. But my parents don't let me jump in to say hi. One of these days, though, I just might. So I'm just as excited to learn about fish as you are. If you want to read along with me, click the link in the description. Ready? Let's dive right in. Fish facts for kids. Fish are vertebrates which live in water and respire or get oxygen with gills. They lack limbs with digits, fingers and toes. This is a definition which does not quite work. Some amphibia also live in water and have external gills, but they are not fishes. There are more fish than tetrapods or land vertebrates. There are over 33,000 described species of fish. Fish are usually covered with scales. They have two sets of paired fins and several unpaired fins. Most fish are cold-blooded. A fish takes in oxygen from the water using gills. There are many different kinds of fish. They live in fresh water, in lakes and rivers, and in salt water in the ocean. Some fish are less than one centimeter long. The largest fish is the whale shark, which can be almost 15 meters long and weigh 15 tons. Most fish live in the water. A group of fish called the lungfish have developed lungs because they live in rivers and pools, which dry up in certain parts of the year. They burrow into mud and estivate until the water returns. Fish or fishes. Though often used interchangeably, these words have different meanings. Fish is used either as singular noun or to describe a group of specimens from a single species. Fishes describes a group of different species. Anatomy. Bony and cartilaginous fish. Most kinds of fish have bones. Some kinds of fish, such as sharks and rays, do not have real bones. Their skeletons are made of cartilage, and they are known as cartilaginous fish. Gills. Most fish exchange gases using gills on either side of the pharynx. Gills consist of thread-like structures called filaments. Each filament contains a capillary network that provides a large surface area for exchanging oxygen and carbon dioxide. Fish exchange gases by pulling oxygen-rich water through their mouths and pumping it over their gills. In some fish, the capillary blood flows in the opposite direction to the water, causing countercurrent exchange. The gills push the oxygen-poor water out through openings in the sides of the pharynx. Some fish, like sharks and lampreys, possess multiple gill openings. However, bony fish have a single gill opening on each side. This opening is hidden beneath a protective bony cover called an operculum. Fish scales. All fish are covered with overlapping scales, and each major group of fish has its own special type of scale. Teleists, or modern fish, have what are called leptoid scales. These grow in concentric circles and overlap in a head-to-tail direction like roof tiles. Sharks and other chondrichthys have placoid scales made of denticles, like small versions of their teeth. They also overlap to, in a head-to-tail direction, producing a tough outer layer. Shark skin is available for purchase as shagreen, a leather which is original as smooth in one direction and rough in the other direction. It may be polished for use, but is always rough in texture and resistant to slipping. These scales are usually covered with a layer of slime, which improves passage through the water and makes the fish more slippery to the predator. Swimming. Fish swim by exerting force against the surrounding water. There are exceptions, but this is usually done by the fish contracting muscles on either side of its body in order to generate waves of flexion that travel the length of the body from nose to tail 
generally getting larger as they go along. Most fish generate thrusts using lateral movements of their body and tail fin. However, there are also species which move mainly using their median and paired fins. The latter group profits from the gained maneuverability that is needed when living in coral reefs, for example. But they cannot swim as fast as fish using their bodies and caudal fins. Muscle. Fish can swim slowly for many hours using red muscle fibers. They also make short, fast bursts using white muscle. These two types of muscle have a fundamentally different physiology. The red fibers are usually alongside a much greater number of white fibers. Swimming in schools. Many fish swim in groups. Schools of fish can swim together for long distances and may be chased by predators, which also swim in schools. Casual groups are called shoals. Body shape. The shape of the body of a fish is important to its swimming. This is because streamlined body shapes make the water drag less. Streamlining. A shark's shape is called fusiform, and it is an ovoid shape where both ends of the fish are pointy. This is the best shape for going through water quickly. Fishes with fusiform shapes can chase prey and escape predators quickly. Many live in the open ocean and swim constantly, like marlins, swordfish, and tuna. Ichthysaurs, porpoises, dolphins, killer whales all have similar shapes. This is an example of convergent evolution. Eel-like. The long ribbon-like shape of an eel's body shows another shape. This enables them to hide in cracks, springing out quickly to capture prey, then returning quickly to their hiding spot. Flatfish. An adult flounder has both eyes on the upper side of its body. Flatfish live on the bottom of the ocean or lake. Most use camouflage. They change colors to match the ocean floor. Compressed. Fish with compressed shapes have flat, vertical bodies with one eye on each side. They swim upright and can be very thin. They usually live in reefs where their flat bodies can slip in and out among the corals, sponges, and rocks, keeping hidden from predators. Angelfish, surgeonfish, and butterflyfish are all compressed fish. Importance to humans. Economic importance. Throughout history, humans have utilized fish as a food source. Historically and today, most fish protein has come by means of catching wild fish. However, aquaculture, or fish farming, which has been practiced since about 3500 BCE in China, is becoming increasingly important in many nations. Overall, about one-sixth of the world's protein is estimated to be provided by fish. That proportion is considerably elevated in some developing nations and regions heavily dependent on the sea. In a similar manner, fish have been tied to trade. Catching fish for the purpose of food or sport is known as fishing, while the organized effort by humans to catch fish is called a fishery. Fisheries are a huge global business and provide income for millions of people. The annual yield from all fisheries worldwide is about 154 million tons, with popular species including herring, cod, anchovy, tuna, flounder, and salmon. However, the term fishery is broadly applied and includes more organisms than just fish, such as mollusks and crustaceans, which are often called fish when used as food. Recreation. Fish have been recognized as a source of beauty for almost as long as used for food, appearing in cave art, being raised as ornamental fish in ponds, and displayed in aquariums in homes, offices, or public settings. Recreational fishing is fishing for pleasure or competition. It can be contrasted with commercial fishing, which is fishing for profit. The most common form of recreational fishing is done with a rod, reel, line, hooks, and any one of a wide range of baits. Angling is a method of fishing, specifically the practice of catching fish by means of an angle or hook. Anglers must select the right hook, cast accurately, and retrieve at the right speed when considering water and weather conditions, species, fish response, time of the day, and other factors. 
Culture. Fish feature prominently in art and literature, in movies such as Finding Nemo, and books such as The Old Man and the Sea. Large fish, particularly sharks, have frequently been used as the subject of horror movies and thrillers, most notably the novel Jaws, which spawned a series of films of the same name that in turn inspired similar films or parodies such as Shark Tale and Snakehead Terror. Piranhas are shown in a similar light to sharks as in films such as Piranha. However, contrary to popular belief, the red-bellied piranha is actually a generally timid scavenger species that is unlikely to harm humans. In the book of Jonah, a great fish swallowed Jonah the prophet. Legends of half-human, half-fish mermaids have featured in folklore, including the stories of Hans Christian Andersen. Fish themes have symbolic significance in many regions. The fish is often used as a symbol by Christians to represent Jesus, or Christianity in general. The Gospels also referred to fishers of men and feeding the multitude. In the Dhamma of Buddhism, the fish symbolize happiness as they have complete freedom of movement in the water. Often drawn in the form of a carp, which are regarded in the Orient as sacred on account of their elegant beauty, size, and lifespan. Among the deities said to take the form of a fish are Ika Roa of the Polynesians, Dagon of various ancient Semitic peoples, the shark gods of Hawaii, and Matsya of the Hindus. The astrological symbol Pisces is based on a constellation of the same name, but there is also a second fish constellation in the night sky, Pisces Austrinus. Fish as pets. Some people keep fish as pets. Goldfish and Siamese fighting fish are popular types of pet fish. Koi and other ornamental fish are often kept by groups of people in public ponds for their beauty and calming nature. Wow, that was some really great info about fish. My favorite bits were how fish are used in culture and symbology, in the stars and different religions. That was really neat to learn. My daddy really likes fish and going to aquariums. I think they were one of his favorite animals, along with giraffes and otters. Before I came along, of course, now I'm his favorite. No contest. But fish can be very soothing and pretty to look at. They don't make for the greatest conversationalists, though. I bark and bark at them when I pass them in the lake, and all they do is swim away. No saying hi at all. So sad. Oh well, I'll still keep trying to make friends with them. Thanks for hanging out with me today and learning all about fish. Next week, we'll talk about the final pet in our popular pet series, birds. And on Friday, we'll be reading chapter four in our ongoing book, Pep, the story of a brave dog. So make sure to subscribe so you can join in all the fun. Thanks for watching. Bye.